Ooh la la. How good does that feel? Hi everyone, welcome to part two of the BMW M5 engine assembly and today is the day that we're gonna get the con rods and the pistons we're going to mash them together. Once that's done, we're going to install the rings and drop them into the block. Today is going to be rather an interesting day because, well, the parts have been sitting outside for the past two or three days and it is a pretty cold day here in Sydney. It's apparently nine degrees as far as uh, I can tell. And what happened to forged parts? Well, they expand at a different rate compared to the original stock BMW pistons. So, because they've been sitting outside, guess what happened? The pins are seized. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to pop these guys into the oven to be able to remove the pins and then put the sear clips, align everything up, match them to each individual rods because the clearance on these guys have been measured up before. That's what we've done on part zero of the engine assembly video. And then I'm gonna drop the pistons in and talk everything up to spec. Let's go. Now, I really wasn't joking when I say I was going to put them in the oven. I had to preheat the oven to about 80 degrees, and this is not a microwave by the way. Then I put all the pistons and let them sit for about 10 minutes. The result was exactly what I wanted, and as you can see, the pin slides through the piston with no effort. So now we can focus on putting all the seal clips on one of the sides and move on to the next task. And now it's time to clean and lube the piston and pins before installing the connecting rod. Oil them up a bit. Push the pin through the piston until it hits the other side. Then you install the seal clip. Once that's done, you only have seven more to go. But don't worry, the seal clip is a little bit annoying when you're doing it for the first time, but once you get the hang of it, it moves on a lot quicker. Now, with the pistons installed onto the rods, uh, there are two things that are left to do. Number one, we need to put the piston rings on every single one of the pistons. And number two, we need to carefully clean all the balls before we actually install them. There isn't really any particular order on how you do this. I personally like to do one by one, so I'll individually unpack all of the rings because remember on part zero of these videos uh, we actually cut all the rings to size so i know that this one is still in the number one which is the uh, uh, it's actually that one i need to spin this engine around i personally like to go from cylinder number one to cylinder number eight and go my way around again there is no correct order you do as you please let's go Now I can't stress enough how important it is to keep cleaning the engine and the parts as you move along. I've seen several people having mistakes by simply not cleaning the parts enough or having some sort of debris inside of the engine once they start the build. Okay, now what we're gonna do is, uh, this is our last chance to clean the piston a little bit just in case there was some dirt or debris falling on top. And now is the time to install the piston rings. Now, for the rings, I like to start with the third one uh, and then go my way up. There is a special tool, which is a piston ring spreader. I don't know how this is called. It's, it definitely makes your life a little bit easier and that's very inexpensive. But nevertheless, let's get the piston rings onto the pistons. Now we go to the top one. And they have to be oriented to the right sides. You cannot have the end gaps facing all one, one same direction. Otherwise, you could have some blow-by going on. Now, look how easy is this. All you're going to do is pop it in there. Oh, come on, come back here. Pop this guy in there. You open it up a little bit. Never spread the rings more than what you actually need. And there we go. Beautiful. And to the last one, I mean the first one, which is the first ring, same thing. Open them up carefully, slightly, pop them into the groove, and there they are. So, piston rings installed successfully. 
What I like to do is, I'm gonna have the first one facing two o'clock. Sorry, the first one facing 10 o'clock, the second one two o'clock, and the ones under the knee, they're gonna be pointing to five o'clock and seven o'clock. That's it. Now with the rings all lined up properly, I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on them just to help lubrify during the first start. And yes, I'm gonna check it again before we put it into the engine, but it's a good practice to make sure this is all lubed up properly, first, second and third ring. Now I also like to put a tad little bit of assembly loop on the skirts. Yes, I know people go like, oh, you shouldn't be using that stuff because it's synthetic. Well, look, again, uh, if something is going right, why would you change the recipe? This is something that has been working for me for a while, for a few years, so why would I change it? I just like to do it that way, and that's what we're doing. Good, now, Next thing is to make sure the piston is facing the right direction because there is a correct way to install them. If you look on the BMW OEM pistons, it's got an arrow on top which points to the front of the engine. On these aftermarkets, you actually have to measure it up yourself and find out which one of the side is the largest one and the smallest one. The smallest one is what's called the major truss force for the engine, which is the opposite to the side of rotation. So in our case, because this engine is spinning clockwise, the major truss face is going to be the opposite side to the clockwise, which is this one where I am. So I'm going to install the piston this way. Now, <laughs> we're going to lube up a little bit this guy. How do I put this? Okay, there are a few tools available on the market, and this is, this is a ring compressor, all right? So I like to use this one instead of this one. This is also a ring compressor. You put the piston inside, you tie this notch in here, and it compresses the rings. These can be a bit tricky to use uh, because well, in all the manuals, they're gonna say never bang the piston into the, the block when you're doing that. You shouldn't hit with a hammer or anything, but that isn't really a way of doing if you don't do that. In the other hand, because most of the engines I do are the N63 and the S63, I bought this guy, which is a taper piston ring compressor. And all that it does is, it's got a taper on it, so this, size, this side is bigger than the other. Once I put the piston through the top, I'm able to carefully align it onto the block and then push it in. And that's exactly what we are going to do now. So from this side to the other. Uh, carefully get these guys in. Make sure the rings are aligned. Yeah, beautiful. There you go. So. Piston is in, which size? This is the side. Now we gotta do two things. Number one, stay there. I have to lube up the bore because we're putting the piston in. We don't want it to be scratching on the walls and I just clean it so there's zero oil in there at the moment. That is the first thing. Second thing is you put some assembly lube on the bearings. Now with this stuff properly looped up, I'm gonna bring the piston here, carefully insert it into the ball. And with both of my hands, I'm gonna push it in. And it's that simple, all right? So the biggest fear that I had when I was building the first couple of engines was when I was using this guy, it was almost impossible to line up and having the piston to go in in one go. And watching a couple of videos online, people were saying like, oh, you just bang it with a hammer from the top down when they can break the rings, it can be. Bottom line is it can be done. You can definitely use one of these ring compressors in order to pop the pistons in, but it's not the best in my opinion. If you are planning to do a couple of engines, if you're doing your engine at home, you buy this, that's 20 bucks, 25 bucks. It's very inexpensive. I think I probably pay about $85 on this one, but this makes my life 
much easier. Now, turning this guy over, what we are going to do is push the piston down and carefully guide from under the knees so the cone rod doesn't actually hit the crankshafts. Okay, and here is our boy. There, beautiful. Now, a little bit more assembly loop on this guy, making sure we don't put anything on the edges here, because that's going to be the clearance. A little bit of assembly loop on this guy. And we have to put the cap back in, making sure the numbers are lining up with each other. So I can see both of the numbers are on this side. So I have to put this facing this way. Now, I just talk a little bit by hand, just to bring the cap back together. And now what I'm going to do is, I can remove the bolts because the dolls are going to be holding them in place. And I'm going to lube them up properly. We have to lube the threads and we have to lube this head of the bolts because when we're talking, we're actually stretching the bolts. And the torque number that we apply is nothing but enough force in order to stretch the bolts enough and keep the correct clamping force onto the cap, if, if, if that makes sense to you guys. Assembly, fastener assembly lubricant. This is from ARP, all right? This is what they actually recommend when using ARP bolts. If they recommend that, who am I to say, no, you don't need to use it. You just use it. So put a little bit in there, put a little bit on the head. Pop this guy in here. Again, a little bit on the threads. A little bit on the head. Put this guy in there. And now all you have to do is talk them up according to the manufacturer's specification, which is, in this case is ARP. They recommend you talk them to 75 uh, neutral meters, so that's what we are doing right now. I like to tie them up a little bit before I go full torque. That's 75, and that's 75, all torqued up. Now we're going to grab our pen and mark both of these guys. Because they talked up properly. Now it's a rinse and repeat for all the other pistons and rings for the whole engine. So let's go. Now, look at this masterpiece. If we've done everything properly, we should be able to now 
crank the engine and it's obviously going to be a little bit heavier than a normal engine an engine that has been running because the piston rings are new so there's going to be more friction on the walls but fingers crossed let's see if we can crank it Ooh la la how good does that feel beautiful Mmm, another one. All right, folks, so I think that's it for part number two of this video. Now you know how to put a connecting rods, pistons, and rings onto an N63 or S63 block. I hope this video was helpful, and I know if you're doing this sort of stuff for the first time, it can be pretty frightening if you've never seen it before. So at least now you've seen a video, you have a rough idea of what to do, and well, I think the video was uh, helpful. I hope the video was helpful. So as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. There was once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from a